Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how to investigate the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis. And if you're a higher tier student, you should also be able to explain how the results of this are affected by the inverse square law. This is the required practical so you need to learn the details. We start by taking a boiling tube and placing it 10 centimeters away from an LED light source. An LED light is used as these don't release very much heat. Too much heat would change the temperature of the experiment. Now if we have to use a normal light bulb, then we need to place a beaker of water between the light and the boiling tube. This absorbs the heat produced by the bulb. Now we fill the boiling tube with sodium hydrogen carbonate solution. Sodium hydrogen carbonate solution releases carbon dioxide and that's needed for photosynthesis. Next, we put a piece of pondweed into the boiling tube with the cut end at the top. We then leave this for five minutes to acclimatize to the conditions in the boiling tube. We should see bubbles of gas being produced from the cut end of the pondweed. This gas is oxygen and that's produced by photosynthesis. Now we start a stopwatch and we count the number of bubbles produced in one minute. We then repeat this two more times and we calculate the mean number of bubbles produced in one minute. Next, we do the whole experiment again from the start, but this time at 20 centimeters. Then we do it at 30 centimeters and finally at 40 centimeters. Now there are two main problems with this practical. Firstly, the number of bubbles can be too fast to count accurately. Secondly, the bubbles are not always the same size so for example a large bubble would count the same as a small bubble. Now we can solve these problems by measuring the volume of oxygen produced instead of counting bubbles. We use this equipment. We place the pondweed under a funnel and we catch the bubbles in a measuring cylinder filled with water. We then use the measuring cylinder to measure the volume of oxygen produced. Now if you're a foundation tier student you can stop watching now. However higher tier students need to continue watching. If we plot the mean number of bubbles per minute or the volume of oxygen per minute against the distance from the lamp to the pondweed, then we get this graph. Now, the key point about this is that if we double the distance, then the number of bubbles per minute falls by a factor of four. So going from a distance of 10 centimeters to a distance of 20 centimeters causes the number of bubbles per minute to fall by four times. And going from 20 centimeters to 40 centimeters the number of bubbles per minute again falls by four times. Scientists call this the inverse square law. Now the reason for this is that if we double the distance the light intensity falls by four times and because we need light for photosynthesis that causes the number of oxygen bubbles to fall by four times. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on this required practical in my vision workbook and you can get that by clicking on the link above. Okay, so hopefully now you should be able to describe how to investigate the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis. And if you're a higher tier student, you should also be able to explain how the results of this are affected by the inverse square law. 